welcome to this how to help video on long multiplication. So we're going to be looking at the Chinese method. I think if uh, if you're watching this video, it is because you've been struggling to secure and become confident in a method. So when you are at that stage, you really want to just default, put all your energy into this method and it will pay off. It absolutely will pay off. It will click and you will just be really, really good at it. So the first thing with this method is the actual grid. So the grid itself looks like this, which looks complicated. So we're going to just talk through how you draw this. Now, obviously, I've done that with a ruler. You can do it freehand. It doesn't all have to be beautifully straight lined. The only thing that you want to be trying to do is to get um, it to look like squares and not rectangles. OK, so let me do a freehand and show you what it looks like. So the first thing that you do is you sort of draw out that main big square. Um, and then what I actually do physically with my eyes, OK, is I'll look at this edge here. And I'll just come in a little bit. So I've come in a little bit with my eyes and that's where I draw my line down. So I'm going to go down and then I do the same thing on the opposite side. So I look at this side. I'm going to come in a little bit and then I'm going to draw a line down. I do the same with the top and the bottom. So I'm looking at the top coming down a little bit and that's where I'm going to draw my line. And that's where I'm going to draw my line. So you can see they're not all the same size, but they look look good enough as squares for this grid to actually work. Now, the next thing I must do is I must get my lines in and this can easily go wrong. OK, so if I just draw a little square here for a sec. OK, if I start in this top corner and then I come through and miss the corner and I kind of drop out through the bottom there or maybe I miss it and drop out through the edge there it's not going to work the actual um, grid is just going to get very messy and confusing so it is vital that we start in that top corner and we come out in that bottom corner so what I tend to do in my head as I'm drawing this is I'm literally saying corner to corner to corner over and over in my head. Uh, I tend to work backwards. So I would do this one and then I'd go backwards through the grid. I mean, there's no rule. That's just my habit. So I'm going corner to corner and then I extend that line a little bit. Corner to corner to corner corner to corner to corner. And you can see that my lines where I'm having to go corner to corner, have got a bit of a wibble in them, especially this one here. You can see it really clearly. It kind of bends here so that you can go through that corner. That is fine. That will work. So don't worry about that. The next thing is to obviously get all of the numbers and, and everything into it. So let's give ourselves an actual calculation to work out. Let's do um, let's do uh, 28 times 43. OK, now I'm going to push everything up towards this corner. So the 23 is going to go along the top and the 40, oh, sorry, 23, it's 28. There we go. And 43 is going to go down the side. Now, look where I've positioned this. The two is in the middle of this box. It's not here or here, it's slap bang in the middle. The eight's in the middle, the four's in the middle, the three is in the middle of those edges. That's where I want them. Because then I can clearly see that when I look at this square, I've got eight and four that feed, if you like, into it, which means it's eight times four, which is gonna give me the calculation to put into that square. So I work out my eight times four, get to 32 and I pop it in. So this splitting into the triangles was actually splitting it into kind of tens and units. So eight threes, all right, into this box, you can see I've got the three and I've got that eight. Eight times three is 24. Into this box, is two, I can clearly see that. The other one is all the way over here. 
it's the four. So two times four, which is eight. I don't have any tens and I've got eight. Okay, and then the last one is two times three. Two goes into this box, three goes into this box. Two times three is six. The next thing is to add out. And I'm actually going to use some color so that we can see exactly what we're adding. Okay, this is where those diagonals become really important. Okay, they've had two jobs. One, they split our tens in units up, and now they are going to help us make sure that we add the right numbers together. Now, this is working backwards, and this is important. Now, you can't change direction. You've got to start here and work this way across the diagram. So this is my first diagonal with a value in it. It's got the number four. There's nothing else there, so four drops out. Here, I've got two plus two is four, plus six is 10. Now I do not do this, all right? I don't write 10. I can only write one digit. So what I do is I put down the last digit and I carry the first, in this case one, okay? Then I add up everything in this diagonal. So three plus eight is 11, plus this extra one is 12. So I'm going to drop down the last and carry the first. Now, I originally had nothing there, but I do now have one. So one is going to drop out. So the answer to 28 times 43 is 1,204. And that is how you use the grid to get your answers. Okay, I'm going to do one more just so that we see it again a second time. So we're gonna do, uh, let's do 57 times, oh, that's not a very good three. Let's rewrite that, times 346. And I'm gonna use this grid as it's there, ready and waiting to be used. So I am going to, Sensitive. My rubber just comes on all the time. 57 times 346. Okay, now we're going to multiply in. So into this box is 7 times 3, which is 21. Into this box is 7 times 4, which is 28. Into this box is 7 times 6, which is 42. Into here, we've got five times three, which is 15. Five times four, which is 20. And then the last one here is five times six, which is 30. And I'll pop the color on just so we can really see what we're doing. And there's no confusion. So, here is my first diagonal with a value. I've got two tucked in the corner here. So two drops out. Eight plus four is 12. So put down the two, carry the one. You put down the last digit, you carry the first digit. I've got one plus two is three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, this rubber, honestly, it wants to come and rub my work out all the time. <laughs> so that was seven, nothing to carry over. We add up the next column. Two plus five is seven, plus this two is nine, nothing to carry over. And then this is my last column with one in it. So the answer is one, nine, seven, two, two, 19,722. And that is the Chinese method. OK, that is the Chinese method. Now, I do want to just quickly show you how it works with decimals. So let's pretend that my original question was 5.7 times 346. If I'm given this, what I do is this. I actually ignore the decimal completely and just do what I know. 
Okay, so what will happen is I would do 57 times 346 and I would get 19,722. But the reality is obviously I have changed the sum. Okay, I need from the original question, this here to be a movement or to come in one place. It's being divided by 10 basically, which means my answer is going to do that. So 5.7 times 346 is equal to 1972.2. It's just a counting the decimals step at the end, that's all. Um, I'm going to do another one just so that we can see that. Let's This time, let's say we had 5.7 times 3.46. I still totally ignore the decimals, take them out, and I do this piece of maths. I do the maths I know. And then obviously I know that 57 times 346 is equal. And then I just count the decimals. That's in one. That's actually in two, which is a total of three. So one, two, three, it's gonna end up there. So I now know that 5.7 times 3.46 is equal to 19.722. And that is everything you need in order to multiply big numbers and to be able to multiply decimals. Okay, uh, that's it. I hope you found this how-to video helpful. And uh, please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.